everyone. Welcome to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series brought to you by Petrania Media LLC and Parkway Media Partners. I'm your host, Petrania Poonswan. And in the studio with me today is my special guest. His name is Cameron Clark. He is the president of United Assessment Recovery, Inc., based right here in Las Vegas. So thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thanks for having me. I so appreciate it. So great to have you. And we thank love you. highlighting the work of entrepreneurs here, right here in Las Vegas. And you've actually been part of this community for quite a few years now, but you're originally yes. from Canada. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Born in Canada, uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta, of all places. Mm -hmm. Most people haven't heard of it. And uh, moved from the uh Great White North, I guess you could say, to uh, the United States permanently around 1996, uh, we'll say thereabouts, 1996. Yeah. So it's yeah. been a while, mm -hmm. and you've been in Vegas since about 2005. Correct. Is that right? Yes. And I, I love it because, you know, usually when we talk to entrepreneurs, there are like certain fields they're in and, and that they're talking about. But you've done quite a bit of things, so we're going to talk <laughs> about all of it. But oh. <laughs> let's talk about your business, that you're currently the president of United Assessment Recovery. So talk to us about that, and what do you do here in Las Vegas? Uh, great question. So United Assessment Recovery is a licensed collection company here in the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, we have a license that comes through the Financial Institutions Division here in the state, which uh, regulates banks and payday loan companies and other, other financial institutions. So it's a very legitimate business that mm -hmm. you go uh, quite a bit through uh, to get. You, you jump through a lot of hoops. Um, you yeah. have to give your fingerprints and do background checks and everything, and it takes a number of years to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you do it, uh, you can go into whatever business to recover delinquent assessment mm -hmm. or other debt, but mm -hmm. we do uh, solely uh, delinquent assessments on behalf of community associations in Nevada. We recover those from homeowners. And that's a huge business here in Las Vegas, right? Yes, a lot of homeowners associations all over the state and a lot here in the Valley. And talk to me about your entry into that field. Was it something that you expected to go in <laughs> growing up? I wanted to be running a collections yes, agency. <laughs> in the third grade during career day, I stood up and said, I want to be a licensed collection manager. And they're like, what's that? Right. No, none of that, uh, actually. <laughs> so I was uh, originally a broadcasting. Um, so so you and I overlap in the, yeah, the background. I and, that. I, and I had mentioned to you that, you know, you have the looks for TV. I have the looks for radio, um, which is what I did. I did. Uh, five years in radio. Was this in Canada uh, or was no, it No, this was actually in Utah. Oh, okay. um, so I did uh, two different markets over five years. I was a morning show host for most of that time. Oh, wow. And uh, a little more lively and zany sounding than I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as uh, that goes, uh, as you know, broadcasting can be a bit of an uh, unstable business. Yeah. Word of warning to all the crazy. aspiring broadcasters <laughs> out there. Right. Be ready to be up and moving um, mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Uh, the pay when you start out isn't great. Nothing, yeah. Um, is nothing. That's, that's a good way of putting <laughs> yeah. it. Um, and I made a determination in about 2005 with a growing family that mm -hmm. I needed to uh, start supporting them. Yeah. And I just didn't want an unstable life. So I, I came to Las Vegas and I, I was a college graduate and was able to uh, get a job in business development mm -hmm. for about a year and a half for a company that did legal services. And they kind of fell into the collections thing um, after we parted ways in 06, mm. me and that company. And uh, from 06 forward, I've been doing this. And I'm one of the few people who has the unique opportunity to have worked for attorneys. That's actually how I got into the debt collection business. Yeah. And then uh, they wanted to become business partners. We formed a company uh, that was called Hampton and Hampton Collections LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can tell, my last name's not Hampton, so I was not one of the guys on the side of the building, which mm -hmm. was fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we sold it and then uh, came into uh, working uh, for uh, what now is United Assessment Recovery. Um, and I've, I've had an attorney work for me. So I've, I'm one of the few people, and I know now that I don't want to go to law school. Yeah. Uh, that's for dang sure. Yeah. Um, they, they can do the work and you can do your work, right? <laughs> that is correct. We've yeah. done it all. We've done it all. It's, it's uh, you know, I've, I've seen how they, they go through what they go through, and mm -hmm. I'm happy to be on this side of the table, so to speak. And, you know, it's just interesting because I was – like you, full-time journalist, mm -hmm. morning show person at one time, and now I'm, I started an, an entrepreneur, you know, on this entrepreneur journey, started my own business, never thought I would be 
ever, a small yes. business owner. And um, and it was interesting because people asked me, it's like, you know, how is that journey like moving yeah. on from broadcasting to to running a business? And I, you know, it's like I, I learn on the go. I mean, yeah. I kind of Google my way into this business. But I wanted to kind of talk about that, like when you were, you know, kind of making that transition, were there things that you thought about, oh, this would really help me, or I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this? You know what I mean? Because right. a lot of people are switching careers now, and maybe thinking about that from your mm. end, what were some the advice that you might have for people now, thinking about maybe doing something completely different, and now you're successful at what you do? That is a fantastic question. And and you know, I think resources like what you're providing are, are very necessary out mm -hmm. there, because uh, people are looking for information and, and credible information. Right. Um, and for me, I think when I had made that change, it's very interesting you asked that question, and I've had to make the change a few times. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom, she passed away back in uh, 2017 from pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and in that time, uh, though, you know, that I was going through these transitions, she was actually somebody I talked to quite a bit. She's mm -hmm. a very career oriented woman. And one of the things that she had said, and, you know, my dad would echo a lot of this too, would be, um, that it doesn't matter if you're going up or you're going down, just as long as you're moving forward. Mm, and I, love that. I think, you know, and it's and it sounds so simple mm -hmm. and yet it's waking up every day, having a routine, getting things done that need to be done rather than thinking about those things. Yeah. And I, I think that what you you've done and you know, and what I fell into back in oh five in running businesses, I think it's so important. I think everybody should try it. And just like waiting tables, I think everybody on the planet mm -hmm. should at least do that for six months to a year so they know what surfers go through. Yeah. I think that uh, people should try running a business for a while. Learn what a, what a balance sheet looks like. Mm -hmm. Learn what P&L looks like. Understand what your, your real income and revenue will be. Mm. Because I don't think people appreciate enough what entrepreneurs are going through. Um, there's a, a modern day philosopher, you know, with a net worth of a lot more than mine, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> who said, uh, and I, his name's uh, Nassim Taleb, he, he said something to the effect of that, you know, entrepreneurs are truly some of the most anti-fragile people that we have on this, this planet. Um, Anti-fragility anti is not a word a lot of people talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's it's not resilient, it's not robust, it's about every time you take a hit, you get stronger, kind of like a muscle, right? And uh, there's very few things you could compare that to. Nature is kind of anti-fragile that way. So I could go on and on, but I, I'll stop no, rambling I, 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 No, I just think it's so interesting because just reflecting back on my journey now, mm -hmm. you know, and at one point where I didn't think I could do anything else except being right. a news reporter, because that's what I know, yeah. you know, and a lot of people feel that way. Like I've been doing my job for 20 years. I don't think I can do anything else and start my own business, <laughs> but you know, I did it anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when I, we were talking about you moving from Canada and I moved here from Thailand when I was 18, yes. uh, I took that leap of faith, right? I had no idea how yeah. that journey or adventure was going to turn out, but I did it anyways. That was the same thing when I started, you know, my journey as an entrepreneur. I didn't know where it was going to go, exactly. but you just have to do it, you know, exactly. and I think a lot of people are kind of nervous about doing that because the unknown is always scary, right? It is scary. And I think that the thing you kind of touched on this, I think the other thing that, you know, when I think about it that I had to discover for myself, mm -hmm. and this is a lot of introspect or introspection and reading is that Pratanya, I'm saying your name, yeah. Pratanya. Pratanya, perfect. Yeah. Um, I didn't practice it before, so. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, Pratanya yeah. uh, and Cameron are yeah. not our jobs. Mm. And we live in a society and an economy that wants to define us yeah. through those Especially things. Especially as a reporter, I mean, you take on that identity yes. as that's your career is who you are. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. What we are are actual people mm -hmm. who way before we discovered these professions had other things that we enjoyed and, and appreciate. And uh, and in the essence of who we are is our and our worth. It, it's not the job that we're doing. Yeah. It's it's what we bring the choices that we're making when we're interacting with other people when mm -hmm. we're acting interacting with our pets or animals when we're interacting just with a society. Those yeah. are the things that define us. And I think that's one of the reasons people are so scared, though, is because they don't realize those are the real things. Mm -hmm. they, they, they look at being a reporter or maybe being, you know, a top chef so, at some restaurant uh, that now they want to go off and, and uh, try something else. They want to try a music career because mm -hmm. on the side they're doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so for me, it's it's I've never allowed being a collection manager to define me. Um, it never will. Um, if somebody was to ask me, you know, what I do for a living, I'd say, you know, I've, I'm a businessman. You know, yeah. I've, I've done business for years. Yeah. But I don't I think people they, they weigh too much on that. Like, well, what's the world going to think of me? You're going to have your moments of awkwardness and embarrassment. Yeah. You just have to kind of jump past that and right. go th- work your way through it. Um, yeah. You know the 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 best um, the best I guess we'll say uh, learners of something are those that that kind of continually remind themselves they're a bit foolish. You know mm-hmm. that's probably a Socrates idea. I think that that's Gosh, where I we just, start. I, I wish I could remember it now. I just heard on a show something about you know something quote about being a fool. It's like the best yeah. thing because yeah. you're always <laughs> learning. You know yeah. what I mean? And and what I love about stories like yours as an entrepreneur and a business owner is that you bring other things to the table mm-hmm. aside from running a business. You have other interests and things that you do, and you choose to do it because it's your passion right. and you love it. And I love it because you also brought some props that I wanted to share. <laughs> um, so you you wrote not a, how many books have you written? So in total. Total, I've published ten, and ten. We'll, yeah, and, and some all under of them your own name and some under a pen under name. Pen, under a pen name, and I'm fine saying on the air. The, and we the can pen say name. because you brought one <laughs> that is under your name, which is the Great Big Success Quote Book, yeah. which I love because. Let me tell you, when we go on Instagram, I just, you know, all these accounts yeah. I follow, a lot of them are just quotes, yes. you know, just to give you that motivation. Yes. And I think a lot of people, so I love this. I can't wait to get into it. But this one's is inst- interesting. So this is your pen name, which is, is it C.K. Shackleton? Yes, yeah, C.K. Shackleton. Right. Uh, so C.K. sounded cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I've been a big fan of uh, Ernest Shackleton uh, for many years, the, the British explorer for the early 20th century. Interesting. So that's where it's from. Yes, yes. And this one is called the Bolshevik ballerina. Yes. So, so there's a Russian spin to this story, right? <laughs> yes. Looks, and I love the art. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I wish I could say I painted that, but I hired somebody to I love do it. that. So, so talk to uh, us a little bit about the Bolshevik ballerina. The this Bolshevik is part of a series, ballerina. right? Yes, yes. Uh, so there's four in the series. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, basically, and it's funny because I picked that pen name in part because of the era that this is set. Mm. Um, there's an era kind of in our, our society we don't talk a lot about. We talk about the Gilded Age that was before World War One, mm-hmm. And um, so the, the each of these books follow a journalist uh, who has uh, been working in for a newspaper. It's a fictional newspaper in New York, and he keeps getting sent out on these jobs to go interview people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but they're not just anybody. They're, they're people who later on become very famous. Uh, and there's a reason why uh, he, you know, I, I did did that is because a lot of these historical people, we don't always know what really was going on in mm-hmm. some parts of their life. So for Bolshevik ballerina, um, and my main character's name is Edward Prince. But in short, Bolshevik ballerina is he's sent out to try to find out why Vladimir Lenin got exiled to France and why exactly he's he's kind of hiding out in different parts of France. Um, mm. A lot of people don't know this, but Lenin had said that France was a toilet or Paris was a toilet. Um, I think he said it in Russian. And uh, this was before he did his massive uh, uh, revolution in Russia, which took out the czar. So I love how you build the story around real mm-hmm. events, yes. obviously story. So if people are interested in history, they can find something really interesting with that this is correct. as well. And those were a bit of an experiment. Um, one of my frustrations sometimes with novels is I think sometimes writers and unfortunately editors get a little too lost in um, uh, you know, too much description and stuff. We've all watched movies, mm-hmm. television shows. So so I'm a little sparse on that. It's more action and dialogue. But I do work in, uh, at the end, I always have history versus fiction. So yeah. I'll give you the clarification of what, what's fictional and what was actual history, yeah. according to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, so you're a busy guy. You're your dad as well. You have two kids, right? Three kids, Three actually. kids, yes. And, um, so, and you run a business. Correct. You're writing books. Yeah. Um, I mean, what else are you doing? What, what's oh. <laughs> your What's next on the horizon for you? You know, gr- great question. That's a great question. Mm-hmm. So I, I enjoy the work that I do with mm-hmm. United Assess Recovery. Uh, we're still uh, growing the business. We're still looking for clients and, and oh, getting great. contracts. So yeah. uh, I definitely want to lead with that because uh, mm-hmm. that's where I spend the bulk of my day. Uh, on what the is side. It? Let me ask you about yes. that because I, when, I, when I get in entrepreneurs in here and this, like, okay, we're growing our business, whatever it is, what's been your kind of um, 
even just advice for other business owners. Oh. What has worked for you? What's been the best way mm -hmm. of getting the word out? Because a lot of people are, who are watching this too, they they want to start their own business, yeah. or maybe they even want to go into what you're doing. You know, and what's 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 worked for you? So funny enough, I wrote another book. It's called Better Business Development Now. I might need that book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your bare bones guide uh -huh. to business marketing. That was the subtitle. Now, somebody told huh. me that the subtitle should have been the title. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it it sells really well overseas. Uh, I, what I notice is, is in India, uh, my Amazon oh. reports are higher. So okay. go figure. They're going to dominate because of me. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, but as far as, as your question, that that is a great question. I think that... There's a couple basic things that I'll mm -hmm. share that not everybody always talks about. Mm -hmm. And that is, first of all, you need to understand the channels through which your message and your communication are going through. Mm -hmm. And what I just said sounds very vague and abstract, but until you take it and you begin to apply it. So for example, in my business, it wouldn't make sense to go and do newspaper advertising or go and advertise at a movie theater because I have a very specific niche market that right. I'm trying to hit. Right. Um, so the, the niche market is community associations mm -hmm. and their board members and their community managers. So I go, you know, they say fish where the fish are, right? right. So that's part of it. The other part of it, just I'll say real fast, um, and I was keeping it in the back of my mind, and now I'm drawing a blank. But I, but it's um, oh, make it easy for people to buy. Um, mm. My business partner and I recently had an experience with uh, a local financial institution that was making it very difficult for us to get some basic services needed. Mm. Um, and uh, and in that span of time, we just gave up. Uh, because they just had made it too difficult for us to get to that place. Yeah. Got to make it easy for the customers to find yes. you and get your business. Yes, because right? as somebody smarter than me said, it's something to the effect of you won't have a business without sales. Yeah. And that's literally the most important thing in any business. Right. Um, but to answer your other question you had said earlier, uh, no, I'm, I'm looking at doing a few other projects. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm always looking for um, you know new book ideas. There's a few drafts of things that I've worked on in communication. Um, I think that, unfortunately, there's a, a dearth in real leadership. I think most management mm -hmm. uh, books out there, or most leadership books, or the things that are presenting themselves as leadership these days, are just warmed over management techniques um, and manipulation ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you really want to lead people, you have to um, unfortunately, you have to have some skin in the game. Yeah. And I say that unfortunately because it can cause pain. Right. Um, and you have to really kind of put yourself out in front of those people as one that unfortunately sometimes there's there's going to be, uh, you know, those that want to throw rocks at your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not hard, it's not easy to be a leader and no. to, to take on that role. But obviously you've done it well and you have grown and still growing, yes. which I think is, is really amazing amazing what you're doing here and you know like me we share we share quite a few similarities you know this is not our home but we've made Las Vegas our no. home um, and it's been it's been going well for you yeah Las Vegas is uh, is a fantastic town and uh, the only time that I begin contemplating moving is probably sometime in mid-June uh, till, <laughs> until you That's know when you take a vacation to August. Canada or yes, somewhere <laughs> yes exactly oh, yeah. well Cameron Clark thank you so much for being part of the show and thank sharing you. part of your entrepreneurial um, uh, story and advice and guidance and books with us. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the future. So again, this is Cameron Clark. He is the president of United Assessment Recovery, yes. a business here in Las Vegas that continues to grow. So thank you. And where can people find you if you, they want to reach out to you? Oh, so if they want to reach out to me, uh, I have actually my own personal website, Austin Cleon, uh, Steal from an Artist, talked about that. So mm -hmm. that's www.cameronmclark.com. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but for my business, uh, the, where I spend the bulk of my day, it's www.uarecovery.com. So it's United Assessment, but uarecovery.com. All right. You know where to find him if you need to get a hold and um, get the service of Mr. Clark. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on Happy the show today. Happy to be today. here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching and listening in this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series. And we'll see you again next time.